your cheating heart will make you commandment, you shall not commit adultery. What does this mean? Here's the answer from Luther's small catechism. We are to fear and love God so that we lead pure and decent lives in word and deed, and each of us loves and honors his or her spouse. You shall not commit adultery. There's a word we don't hear very often, adultery. What does that even mean? What does it mean to adulter or commit adultery? Well, the root word means to corrupt, to make impure, to combine two things that should not be combined, to mix together in a way that makes something worse rather than better. Uh, that's what it means to adulter. It's similar to alter. Um, but it has a negative connotation, has a negative meaning. So if you adulterate something, you make it worse. You muddy the waters. You uh, introduce impurities. So that's what adulter means, or adulterate, or to commit adultery. Now, this has a special meaning when it comes to human relationships. Specifically, to commit adultery is to cheat on your spouse. That is, instead of loving and honoring and cherishing your husband or wife, you go and love, honor, cherish someone else. Most often, this is with sexual intercourse. Most often, people commit adultery by instead of preserving sexual intercourse for their spouse, they go and have sex with someone else outside of that relationship of marriage. But you can commit adultery in other ways too. People can commit something called emotional adultery. That is, instead of giving their emotions and their um, commitment, their, their, their experiences, their energy, to their spouses, people will then give that to someone else. Maybe it's a friend, maybe it's uh, an activity. Uh, that's a little bit more rare. Much more common for people to succumb to their own selfish desires for gratification and they look for that gratification outside of their marriage. That's what it means to commit adultery. In terms of the definition then, Committing adultery brings impurity into a marriage. Ideally, a marriage is between two people who love and cherish and honor each other, and that marriage is made pure when they stay committed and loyal to each other. But if somebody brings in an extra person who doesn't belong there, they are adulterating that relationship. They're changing it. They're making it impure because they've introduced a foreign person from the outside. So do you see the connection then? Marriage is a gift from God given to us in order to lift up the sanctity, the specialness, the holiness of human relationships. 
And this commandment, you shall not commit adultery, protects marriage, protects what God gave to us as a way for us to flourish and have life. You see, when, when two people come together and decide they want to be partners for the rest of their life, to share all that there is in their life for the rest of their lives, that's a very special commitment. It was introduced by God even way back at the beginning with Adam and Eve. He says, what God has put together, let no person tear apart. That's Jesus talking about Adam and Eve uh, becoming a union, becoming together in the bonds of marriage. God wants that for you. He wants that uh, for all people who have been called to that calling of being married because it's such a blessing to live that out. Not everybody is called to be married, but uh, for those who are, it is a special uh, institution. That's why we get married in church, because we want God to bless that. We want God to help us, and we need God's help. And we recognize that God is doing something special at a wedding uh, when two people get married to one another. So God puts this commandment out there into the world to protect married people, to keep them from being disloyal, to keep them from hurting their spouse by saying, do not seek satisfaction somewhere else. Do not go outside of your marriage, but rather love and honor and cherish your spouse and find satisfaction in them. And if there's a problem, don't go somewhere else. Go in and learn to be with uh, your spouse. Learn to be uh, together. Learn to love each other. Because love ultimately is not a feeling. Love is an action. Love is something you do. Love is, um, is following this commandment. So what does this commandment mean for you today? I think there are two big things. First, it means that you remain loyal to whoever your potential spouse might be. That is, you don't go and have sex with other people, people you're not married to. But rather, you remain loyal to whoever your spouse may be by saving sexual intercourse for that person, whoever it might be in the future. That way, when you are married, you will have reserved that special um, togetherness, the physical intimacy, just for that person. You will not have shared it with any, anybody else. You have remained loyal to whoever that person will be. The second meaning for you today, in whatever situation you are, is to remain loyal to the people who are your family and friends. And if you're dating someone, uh, a, a boyfriend or girlfriend, whoever you have a relationship commitment with, you can commit adultery by betraying those people. You commit adultery by cheating on a boyfriend or girlfriend. You commit adultery by betraying a friend and treating them awful and, and talking ill about them behind their back. You commit adultery by uh, being disloyal to your parents and seeking other relationships uh, in a bad way outside of that relationship with your parents. That kind of touches on honor your mother and father, but it's a similar thing. When we betray those that we have a commitment to, we're committing adultery. One of the hardest aspects of this commandment is that God is also commanding us to refrain from adultery even in our thoughts and in our hearts. We commit adultery with uh, our minds long before we commit adultery with our bodies. Jesus even says that whenever we lust after another person, we commit adultery with that person in our hearts. So, whatever you can do to keep your mind and your heart protected from thoughts or images that would have you lust after people who you should not lust after, whether it be boys or girls, then you need to do that in order to stop yourself from breaking this commandment. God is asking you to be loyal and to help others be loyal. And when and if you should become married, 
that you would be loyal to your spouse, that you would love and honor and cherish that relationship above all other relationships. And in this commandment, God is asking you to help others in protecting their relationships. In fact, God is asking that you would intervene if somebody were to be tempted to cheat on their spouse or on their boyfriend or girlfriend or in a friendship or in another kind of committed relationship, that uh, you would help them to remain faithful and not entice them away. That's how you keep this commandment. Thank <laughs> you.